try this again. I don't see a notice that says my connection is weak. We'll try this again. I may have to reboot. I don't know if this is related to the fact that I just dropped my phone and cracked my screen. So I'm going to do limited scrolling because I don't want to cut my finger. I dropped my phone in my kitchen on my tile floor and um, my screen is completely cracked now. So if anyone has a spare iPhone 5 lying around, <laughs> let me know. Uh, because yeah, I just came in from writing and just came in, was dropping my water glass off in my kitchen and I dropped my phone. But I think we're fine in terms of connection. Hi everybody. Colleen Patrick Goudreau here, vegan author and educator. And I encourage all of you to go to the website. There are a couple of things I wanna say before I get into the thoughts I want to share with you related to our kind of follow-up post-election talk that we had last week. Can you believe it's already a week? Um, because it's important that we follow up, I think, and I have some I have some work for you. I have some jobs for you. Uh, so number one, I want to say to go to ColleenPatrickGoudreau.com and you can go check out the segment I did today on Good Day Sacramento. I demonstrated the acorn squash with curried apricot pilaf with saffron rice. It's just absolutely fantastic and delicious. Perfect for a Thanksgiving main dish, a centerpiece, and it's also perfect for any time. That dressing can be used for so many different things, and I encourage you to go get the recipe, which you can get also at ColleenPatrickGoodrow.com. So I also encourage you to join the mailing list, and if you do, you get a free Joyful Vegan Starter Guide and lots of gifts along the way. So that's uh, everything I wanted to say in terms of announcements for you. I can get a kit to fix it on Amazon. Stop it, Rochelle. I can, everyone's like talking about, I hope I can. Well, if anybody has any information about replacing my screen inexpensively, please just email me at support at joyfulvegan.com because yeah, it's really frustrating, but it will be fixed. And so, uh, so all of these things I'm, I'm really putting out a lot of content out there right now with Thanksgiving coming up and me thinking of the turkeys and thinking of this holiday, which, you know, should reflect our values. And uh, so lots of blog posts are going out and I've got more that, that's going out as well. But I wanted to check in with all of you and see how you're doing and just follow up on our conversation about the direction of our country since the election and task you with some things to create the country, to continue creating the country, to manifest the country, all of it that we, um, that we all love because we live in a democracy and we are so lucky to live in, um, in such a place. And so there's so many things that we can do to be involved in this democracy that I think all of us get complacent about. I think it happens to all of us, it happens to me. Um, and, um, thanks Stacy. Yeah. I'm really enjoying sharing the quotes also on Instagram. So that's another way people can follow me. So first of all, let's take a deep breath and just know that right now where we are is where we are and we can only act according to where we are, right where our feet are. So one of the things I always try to do myself and say to people around me when they're feeling stressed and they're anticipating the worst or they're they're you know trying they're guessing what would happen in the future is I always say just look down at your feet. So just everybody right now look down at your feet. <laughs> True. No, look down now. Look down at your feet. Thank you. Because that's where we're at. And that's where we are. So starting there is really important. And who we are and where we are is kind of the starting point. So I can share with you what works for me and I can share with you my thoughts about what is what works for me. I absolutely know the the fear and the the disheartening-ness that's a noun. Um, how disheartening it feels listening to uh, what's going on. And yet my, my gut inside of me, once I picked myself up from that first 
those first couple days, I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm ready to fight. And I really don't feel despair. I, and I'm so grateful that that's just kind of not really an option. And I will tell you why I think despair is not an option. Because one of the reasons despair is not an option is because the only power that people have or ideas have, the only power thoughts have, the only power anything has is the power we give it. And so I was talking to some friends yesterday, some very good friends who I absolutely adore. And we were all just sharing. We hadn't seen each other since the election. And they're of like mind, but also just not but and so kind and also of the mind of just wanting to be hopeful and positive and not wanting to be a reaction. Now, I want to really emphasize that because what I think is really tempting right now is to have reactions, to react. Everything's a reaction. So we hear the news, we read the paper, we watch the news, we read the headlines, we see what's going on, we think about what's going to happen, we think about what, what was said during the campaigns and the campaign, and we react, we react, we react. That's not a place of power. And empowerment. A place of power and empowerment is contemplation and action, not reaction. Does that make sense? So for me, this is not, so one of the things my friend said, and you know, we've all, you know, everybody thinks this, right, is, um, you know, thinking of the, the worst, the worst of what we saw, the lowest of what we saw, the darkest of what we saw during the campaign, what my friend said was, is this the direction of our country? Is this the direction of our country? Like, I think this is awful. Is this the direction of our country? And my first response was, no, because we're here. It's only the direction of this country if we let it be. It being racism and misogyny and sexism and, you know, jingoism and just all of the things that I know I don't stand for. And so, so this isn't about reacting to that. This is about acting as the fierce, compassionate people we are to manifest that value, those values, the things we care about most. So does that make sense? I'm going to just scroll if I can and hope hope I don't cut my finger because <laughs> of my broken screen. And it's really hard for me to read the, the, your comments as well. I should have my computer here. Oh, wait, hold on, I do. Oh, the other night it wasn't that easy. There was a delay. But let me see if my computer helps me because it'd be easier. Um, so uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> That's so cute, Katie. You just painted your toenails. Um, oh, I know, Marie. Hold on. Okay, I'm looking at your. I'm looking at your comments. Let me see if I can look at your comments by looking down at my screen. So just let me do that because it's a little difficult to read. Um, Patricia, I'm trying to encourage all my contacts who are distressed about the environmental impacts of the election that going vegan is the most impactful and powerful thing we can do. You're so knowledgeable and inspiring. I'd love to see you um, writing on this topic. Sure. Um, Marie, is Sarah Palin really the Secretary of Interior? Is that really what's being tossed around? I, I actually didn't hear that. And I, I did pay attention to the news today uh, a lot. Um, a lot more than I have in the last in the last week because I was driving to Sacramento and I and I love NPR. I love listening to NPR and then I watched President Obama's press conference. I don't know if everybody watched it, but I I found hope in that too. I mean, so I so what I want to say is this. I am I am not interested in reacting to all of that right now. I'm not interested in reacting to to all of that fear because if I react to that fear, I'm giving power to it. 
And I, I mean that genuinely. I don't mean that in some, you know, frou-frou way. I mean, we, it, we, you know, whatever we pay attention to grows. And it's the truth. And so if I pay attention to that fear, it becomes real. If I pay attention to all of that, it becomes real. I'm not saying that we go live in a la-la land and don't pay attention and don't. <laughs> so that's my next part of my, of my let's act. So if I react, I'm give. does that make sense? I really want... I really want to know if that makes sense to you because if I'm if we're reacting to something that's all we're giving power to but if we're acting towards something that's what we're giving power to does that make sense I really want that to be clear because this isn't about being passive this is about being active but it's it's also about not being reactive and I want to make sure that's really clear um Sure, absolutely, absolutely. So what Kat, Katie is saying is, you know, what we can do is uh, impactful things is um, is peacefully protest, remain vigilant, and try to get involved in our communities on a local level. I would say for me, um, it's even. I would flip that around because, well, first of all, I am just going to say that I'm really proud of my city because I I wasn't around when it was happening, but there was a um, a hands around Lake Merritt last night. And it was a peaceful protest, and it, I loved it because it was about unity. And there's already, you know, officials in sac in, in California getting together to create a, um, a you know, a, a strength of unity, which is so important because that's what this is about. This is about unity, and it's about um, connecting with the things and the people and the values we care about. So, um, so yeah, so definitely listen to the news as you're able to, if you can't take it all in, you know, be, be gentle with yourself. But what I want to, you know, so what I want to say about that is we have to act and of course, you know, peaceful protest because we're connecting with other people. I, I absolutely agree, but I don't, I would I don't want to call it a protest because, because in the sense of, again, um, protest means that you're fighting against something and like, we can fight against all of that. <laughs> I mean, the reality is he won. So that's the reality. I mean, that was the election and it was a democratic election. But we can, you know, we can we can take all of the things that we care about and act on those things. And so, yeah, we have to we have to exercise this thing called democracy in more ways than just electing officials, if we even show up to do that. When I hear about people who don't vote because they're they're skeptical of the system, that drives me absolutely crazy because the system only exists by people being involved. Like that's what the system is. It is a democracy. So it doesn't like exist without people. So this idea that we just elect people and then we expect them to just go do our bidding and they should know what we're thinking and know what we want based on the values that we should all share as, you know, a shared party, it, that's not enough. We need to be involved in so many ways. And the good thing about that is that there's such a huge spectrum of ways to be involved. We can manifest our values, of course, by making decisions in our own lives that reflect the values of compassion and kindness we have. That's why I'm vegan. We can do something that simple. We can do something as simple as writing letters and being connected with our elected officials. But the first way to do that, especially so we're not just doing that when we're in panic mode, is to know who our elected officials are. And so I would really just task everyone to find out who their officials are. I, I can't I can't know the answer. I could ask you right now if you know who your your you know your representatives are in Congress, both in the Senate and the House. I'm obviously speaking to people who are here in the United States. Um, but um, but for any wherever you are, do you know who represents you? If you do, awesome, write to them, say, here I'm here and I elected you for X, Y, and Z and this is what we need and this is what I expect you to do. They only exist because we put them there. And you can get cynical and you can say, no, lobbyists put them there and corporations put them there. And that is true in some cases, but they're, they will remain there because we let them have a job. And they will be taken out if we... Um, 
fire them. That's what democracy is. So, um, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I took some action today. You know, I, I, we can, we can only do so much. I mean, you know, we, you know, we, but, but like I said, the great thing is that there are so many different options. And so the first thing I would ask everybody to do is know who their elected officials are from their city and their regional and their state and their federal representatives just across the board write them down put them in a document on your computer just you know save that do whatever bookmark there you can find it in about 60 seconds and um and that's really the first thing we have to do is hold the elected officials accountable for um for what we voted them into office for um, Anthony says, I'm going to see if I can, I wish I could see my own video broadcast on my laptop while I'm live. Can I? Because it would be so much easier to read your comments. Anthony, I can see yours, Anthony. Hold on. Saying uh, hi from Morocco after almost three years in the Peace Corps. Oh my gosh, Anthony, I totally remember your letter. And speaking to you, yes, we spoke just before I left because I read your letter on the podcast. Um, it has been the surprising week here and gave me a lot of perspective. Unexpectedly, most people have been saying congratulations, not because of the results, but for the efficiency and stability of our democracy and the ability to freely speak and assemble. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. That goes to show, I mean, that's what I mean when I say I understand wanting to have camaraderie with like-minded people. I understand wanting to vent Again, believe me, this is not the outcome I wanted. And yet, that election was a democracy at its best. And it that's what it looks like. And you're not always going to be on the winning side. But it is such a gift that many people fought and died for over the centuries to have this democracy that we have. And so I'm very grateful for it. And so that's very interesting to hear you say that from Morocco, um, that that's the perspective. Win or lose, you have the opportunity to vote. To vote, and there are many, many people uh, who don't. Uh, so let me see if I can see some more questions here, so I don't scratch my um, my finger again. Welcome everybody. I I dropped my iPhone, and my screen is completely cracked, <laughs> so I can barely see myself. Forget uh, your comments. So I'm trying to look on my uh, my laptop so I can see when your comments come in. Um, let me see if I can try one more here. Hold on, let me see. Ah. Uh, um, Sofian says, uh, regarding the Humane Party, I feel like the platform is wonderful, but once Clifton Roberts' campaign manager started defending Trump over and over once he was elected, I've lost some of my enthusiasm. Oh, okay, so someone asked about the Humane Party. Um, <laughs> and Tina's asking what the best shredded cheddar vegan cheese is. Um, I would say Follow Your Heart is really fantastic. I think it's, fan you know, great. Daya is great also. I, I think I like follow your heart a little bit more. <laughs> um, so that's my opinion. Hello from New York City. So yeah, and again, what? so the protests, that's democracy. Like they're exercising their right. <laughs> and that's awesome again because that's what they have the right to do. So um, so in all, in all ways, I just want to I just want to send a shout out to democracy <laughs> and just be really grateful for that. I mean, if we can't take heart in that, then then there's then forget it. There's just no hope. So I don't know if what I'm saying is making any sense. What I'm saying is the voice, the voice of compassion and nonviolence and connection and democracy and community and all of the things that I know I care about that I think you care about as well, will need, needs to pr prevail and will with our voices speaking for it. So it was the commitment that I made the day after the election, the night of the election, and you can see that on my website, the vow that I made that my voice is a voice of compassion and, and my voice is a compassion, a, a voice of, of nonviolence and, 
and peace. And that's what I plan on using in the in the strongest, loudest, fiercest way. So again, this is not about passivity in any way. It's about acting and and giving power to that rather than giving power to um, to that vitriol and the hate speech and the fear that the power for me is in uh, in giving voice to the voice of 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 compassion. Let me see if I can see any other comments here because it's hard with my poor broken screen. Mary says, listening, thank you. And I am a voice for vegan cheese. A voice for vegan cheeses all around the world. And there are so many vegan cheeses around the world. It's not just the it's not just cheeses in the United States, goodness knows. It's very interesting. It looks like when I refresh, I just get the most recent comments, not anything prior to that. I can see um uh Mm, okay, I can see a change.org um, that Marie has put down, and people will see that on the comments. And we have Dea. Miyoko's is wonderful. It's true, but I think for a grilled cheese, if you're looking for like a grilled cheese, like a melty grilled cheese, I think Dea and Follow Your Heart. And also, but they're not shredded, uh, the um, the uh, uh, chow, chow slices from... from uh, uh, Field roast. Yeah, Miyoko's is great. It's not all the same cheeses. I mean, some cheeses are cheddar shreds and they're great for grilled cheeses and some cheeses are slices and they're great for cheese sandwiches and for grilled cheese. And some cheeses are great for, you know, for elegant crackers and some great are great for macaroni and cheese. I mean, they're not all going to be used the same way, but um, they're all great. They're all fantastic because I am a voice for vegan cheese. Um, Chrissy became a patron today. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Chrissy. I haven't gotten notice of it yet. Thank you so very much. And I should say that the podcast, the newest podcast episode just launched yesterday. I just put it live yesterday. Talked about my trip to LA and also made some announcements. One of which is the new podcast called Animology, which I'm working day and night on, literally nonstop. And it's so exciting and invigorating and important to me. And um, I am I need a new engineer and I need I'm getting graphic designs made right now. Need more space to store all of the new files coming up because you're gonna get so sick of hearing my voice because the podcast coming up for Animology is going to be much more frequent because right now what I'm doing is writing a number of episodes in advance and going to be recording them and my hopefully new engineer will um, I'll have a bunch already edited and put in the vault so I'm going to be releasing them um, I'm so excited about this podcast so Chrissy you're enabling me to do this and I am so grateful for your support thank you so much anybody who would like to support my work can do so through um, through my website at uh, ColleenPatrickAdroy.com um Mary says, regarding the election outcome and the implications for animals, I really need some realistic hope, inspiring messages, and empowering, encouraging steps to take. Great. I, let's, let's talk about that. Um, so what I, what I would say about that, Mary, is first of all, go look at my posts that I wrote about uh, both right before the outcome of the election and right after it about the really hopeful, hopeful uh, things that passed, some measures and propositions that passed in many states and some and some things we didn't want to pass that didn't pass, like in Oklahoma, you know, the work goes on and 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 that we're gonna keep doing this work. So I would say first of all, support the organizations you see doing work that you find very effective. Find out from them how you can get involved on a number of different levels. Of course we can monetarily support them, but I do really believe in you know, in being involved on the legislative level, on on the letter writing le level, I think people, I think we all underestimate the voices we have. There's a there's a, a theory I heard once that this applies both for letter writing, like le writing letters to the editor, and it also applies to writing letters to your Congress people or any or any representatives in government. That for every one letter they get, it it represents. 100 voices or more. And so 
I don't think we understand the impact. You know how sometimes when you hear, you hear, you hear something, right? You hear like some quote or theory or idea. And then the next thing you know, you're saying, no, I've been hearing that this thing is true. No, I've heard from a number of people. When you heard it once, like we exaggerate <laughs> like these, the, what we hear. So it's the same thing when, a, you know, a, a, an editor gets a letter, a perspective from someone to the editor or or one person writes to their representative. They understand that that represents the voice of many. So do not underestimate your own single voice because you are speaking for many. And of course, in the case of animals, we're speaking for millions of animals. So get that, I was gonna say pen out, but we don't write letters anymore with pens. Just, just there's so many things we can write to people about and talk to them about. Find out what issues are going on in your own community. You know, I took up that mantle with some very strong, good people to stop backyard slaughter in Oakland. And we did it. And it was hard. And it was a slog. And it was painful. And it was difficult and challenging and confusing sometimes. But we did it. And, you know, there's an issue going on in my neighborhood right now. And, uh, and it's one that I'm conflicted about, but animals are involved, not in any egregious way that they're being hurt. But I wrote to my uh, city councilman today and to my mayor, and I've already heard back from the office of my city, city councilman, and I'm, I, I said, I await your response. Like, you're, you know, I want to hear what you have to say about this. So, so I'm going to stay involved in that. So find out what issues there are locally for you to get involved in. Contact your you know, even bigger organizations who might have boots on the ground where you live, there might be issues that they need people to show up at meetings for, at council meetings for, or they need letters written to the editor, or they need someone to do signatures, or they need things handed out. I mean, there's so many ways to get involved. I mean, I know these are little, little victories. Not, I don't think the legislative things that passed are little, but I mean, I was about to say, this isn't little for the one individual who was suffering. I don't know if you've all heard of that uh, polar bear who's been in this pathetic, uh, ex, you know, exhibit in China in a mall. And he's been in this pathetic, like small space. He's a freaking polar bear. And as an exhibit, he's there alone with no companions in China in a, in a mall. Doesn't, that's not, that's not really where he belongs. And so, you know, Humane Society International and other organizations have been writing to the Chinese government. The Chinese government's very, you know, hard-headed about it. They don't want to let go of what they think is their right to do this, but they actually changed their minds. They're sending, they're, he's not sending him out of China because many organizations had, um, had offered to take the the polar bear in terms of a sanctuary space um, or refuge, and he, he's actually going to be um, going to live at a refuge. I mean, those those things happen because people spoke up. So so that's kind of big picture. Like, and so what's happening with our fears about the. Um, <laughs> about the climate change summit, you know, everything that's happened with the Paris uh, climate change summit. I mean, it's frightening. Of course it is. And, you know, we, there's a, there's, we need to find out who to connect with to say, what's the plan? We need to get the plan in place and strategize both locally and globally, and then show up when the time comes. And there's another part where we don't quite know what's going to happen yet, but we have to be ready. And one of the ways to be ready is to know who to say, okay, let's get this together. Now that we, so we, we, we know who to connect with because what happens is we get into this scramble when we don't know where to go when we find out things are happening that we think we have no control over, but sometimes do. Um, so that's why I'm saying right now, let's at least start laying the foundation for all of the things that we need to and can and should be doing right now, which is reaching out to, um, to, to everybody, <laughs> finding out who in your own community is like-minded, starting a coalition, start strategizing, start finding out what's going on in your own community, start reaching out to your, your state and federal representatives and say, okay, what's the plan? Because this is what I'm scared about, and what's the plan? What can we do? Where, where do we start? And just that, that means backing up and finding out who those people are in the first place. Does that help at all? Does that help at all? Let me see if this helps at all. 
checking my check in your comments for any comments um good does that help good glad yeah i mean the truth is we have to look at that too it's you know I'm going to say this. I'm not saying that the the appointments that he's making right now, you know, for for, for him to pick, you know, the the you know, former executive director of the of the alt right, you know, I mean that is, or, or, you know, or, or of um, of uh, of of um, of Breitbart. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, who's, you know, who's one of the, one of the stalwarts of the alt-right. It's incredibly disturbing to me, absolutely incredibly disturbing to me. But what I also want to say is we don't know all of the things that are going to happen. And a campaign is very different than running a country. It really is true. What people do and say in a campaign is different than what they do and say when they realize this is a really hard freaking job. Um, so what I want to say about that too is let's not romanticize what Hillary Clinton would have been for the animals. She wouldn't necessarily have been this amazing thing for the animals. Do I think she would have overturned or stopped working on the summit for climate change? No. Do I think she would have appointed the greatest climate change uh, denier uh, on the planet? No, I don't think that. But, but what I'm seeing in terms of the hope for animals, in terms of all of these different propositions and measures and legislation, you know, legislative um, laws that are passing. It's happening on a state level. It's happening on a local level. Level Certainly there's some to happen on a federal level as well. Uh, so I think there's a lot to be done on all fronts. And we, if we think this one person has all the power to change everything that we care about, we're giving him too much power. And I, I'm just going to say it. Like, we're giving him too much power. I'm sorry, because I, I'm, I'm going to hold both the space of Yes, this is not what I wanted, but also I'm going to do what I can to make sure that my values are reflected in, 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 you know, locally and federally and globally beyond just this country, right? And that's what we can do. It's not all we can do. It's what we can do. And this is not a dictatorship. It's not. As much as people want to hold that space of despair, it's not a dictatorship. And I'm not going to give him that power. So what else do we have here? Um, looking, looking, looking. Yeah, what's my plan, says Melissa. <laughs> um, so the, I'm I'm still in my kind of time of of reviewing and looking deeper at who I um who I want to support. I I have been strategic. Well, I'm always strategic in terms of who I support, and I'm I'm becoming even more strategic. So I'm kind of right now starting to reach out to my my uh, local and uh, and federal um, state um, and state uh, uh, representatives, and just kind of saying, okay, what's the plan? Where we go from here? What's happening? I'm meeting with friends. We're starting to talk about what do we need to do because the changes need to happen from the inside out. So what do we need to do from the inside out? One of the things that I'm looking into is, and I'll offer this to you. You know, they're going to be changing the leadership at the DNC, at the Democratic uh, National Committee. And so if if anyone out there is a part of the Democratic Party and is interested in leadership in the Democratic Party, making sure that we're electing people and nominating people who reflect our values, then you need to be part see what we can do to get part, be part of the process of making sure the DNC elects leaders that reflect those values. So it's not, you know, it's, it takes work. It's, it's not, you know, I can't snap my fingers and make it happen, but nothing's going to happen if I just sit and, and complain about it. So not that, not that I'm saying anybody right there is sitting and complaining about it, but for me, like, yeah, I've got to do something. So that's where I'm at in terms of kind of the organizing stuff politically and, uh, and, you know, I think we're still reeling. So I'm still reeling and now starting to get into the mode of, okay, what, what does this look like? And I'm going to keep checking back with you. And that's why I'm holding everyone to task to first say, find out for you who your reps are uh, now. Start finding out what the issues are now. Um, in terms of animal organizations, I support, I, you know, right now I'm also interested in, in finding out from environmental groups what, what needs to be done. I think we all need to just be ready for 
the um, the changes that could happen around the climate um, the climate stuff. So I'm 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 finding out what needs to be done uh, in in that sense. And then as far as other groups, you know, I mean, right now my change I'm not making drastic changes in terms of the animal groups I support because I really love the groups I support. And right now a lot of them have to do with rewilding, they are um, their local rescue organizations and their wildlife rescue organizations, but they're also rewilding organizations because we have to have a paradigm shift around how we, you know, how we interact with the rest of the world. And, uh, and that's, that's where I'm at, you know, with, um, with animal organizations I support. And then, uh, you know, I support a lot of animal organizations. <laughs> I support a lot. Uh, let's see. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, we do need to unite, Mary. I'm glad that helps. I'm really glad that helps. Let's see. Many of us are appalled and very discouraged about the ballot measures in several states, including here in Kansas, that passed establishing an amendment to the state constitution. Oh my God, making hunting. Yeah, that was one of the ones that was not good. Um, trapping, fishing, a constitutionally guaranteed right. That is, that's a really tough one. I don't know where Keith Elf, um, Ellison stands and I'd be really interested to know, Sofian. I'd really be interested to know that. Um, so let's find out. Let's find out. Let's do it. Because the question is also, not only where do you stand, but can I, can I share some things with you? You know, can I share some information with you? I mean, we can do that with any one of our reps. We can contact them at any time and say, I'd love to come in and talk to you about things I care about in my city slash state slash country. Anytime we can go do that. So let's find out about um, Keith Ellison. I'd be very interested to know because I hear a lot of really good things about Keith Ellison. I've been hearing a lot of good things about him. So um, let's find out. Let's find out some more. Love it. Love it. Love it. You're so awesome. Um, what else can I say? What else can I say? You know, so, so, you know, I would, I would say um, to, who was that? Who said about Kansas? Um, Mary. Yeah. Mary, have you contacted the Humane Society? I'd be really curious to know what, um, I'd be really, uh, I'd be really curious to know what the Humane Society says about that particular, um, prop that passed. I mean, it's one of the problems with, with, um, with measures and propositions, isn't it? I mean, it really is. It's, it's, it's one of the, one of the downsides of it. Um, websites, that's a good question. Websites to contact our reps. You know, there, I would just, just do a search and, and see what comes up because it's, there's so many websites. I don't have one that I go to. Um, I do go to, you know, I would search also for, uh, definitely for, um, animal lobbyists and, um, you can definitely find out the records, uh, of different representatives and how they have voted on animal issues when it's been, um, you know, when they've had the opportunity to do so. So definitely go find out. Start a document, you know, start a document on your computer of your representatives because, you know, when it comes time to contact them, the last thing you want to do is go scramble and find those websites again and let me put in my zip code and who are they. Just put a document on, you know, I don't even have a document and I kind of know some, but you know what? I'm going to go do that myself. I vow right now to you that I am going to create a document of all of the representatives that uh, represent me and, um, and then start looking at their uh, records around animal issues. Um, but at least starting there, will you join me in that? Will you join me in that? And I'm gonna check back and ask everybody how they, how they do. Uh, let's see if there's any more here before we go. I am going to enjoy the uh, stuffed squash with the curried apricot pilaf, comma, uh, for dinner tonight, no comma, for dinner tonight, because I made it for my segment today, and I am so happy. It's so much better going to Good Day Sacramento than going to the Fox Station. The Fox Station, I have to, like, make stuff for everybody to eat, which is good because I want them to try it, but then I have nothing when I come home. <laughs> so it's really nice for me to come home and actually have food that I make because they don't reimburse me for that food and they don't 
yeah. So um, for the time, I don't get paid for those TV segments, but hopefully some people saw it today and are interested in, um, in checking out the website and getting on the mailing list and definitely going and making that um, recipe. I have definitely heard from some people who saw the segment who'd never heard from about me before or heard of me before, and um, they're very interested in that recipe and, and what I had to say. And I've seen a number of sign-ups uh, for my mailing list today, so that's encouraging. That's why I do it, so that I can get, be a voice for animals. I mean, I made a point. You know, Bethany, I, I will say this. I, I think it's really important not only to write to people to, um, to okay, I get distracted when I see your comments. Yes, Sasha, I love the Non-Human Rights Project. I think it's incredibly important. For anybody who's interested, go check out the Non-Human Rights Project, and I need to go and support them monetarily. I haven't done that yet. So go check out the Non-Human Rights Project. I think it's incredibly important because it is a paradigm shift that they're, they're working on. So thank you. Um, um, so one thing I want to say that it's not only important to tell people who represent us what they're doing wrong and what, what we want them to do differently, it's also really important to tell people, anybody, whether they're representing us or just their journalists or whatever, to tell them what they're doing right. And so I would really encourage all of you to go follow Bethany Crouch. She is the, uh, she's one of the hosts of Good Day Sacramento, and she is just just an angel, and she loves supporting me and my voice for compassion for the animals. She want, she would want I mean she would want me to come in every Monday if I could. She was over at Fox and I was going over there on a regular basis. I was also doing segments with Good Day Sacramento with Melissa and Sean, but then I started also doing a lot of segments. You can see a lot of them on my website with with Bethany, and now Bethany has moved over to Good Day Sacramento, which is a much better studio. It's much easier. It's fast, well, faster. It's an hour and 15 minutes for me to get there rather than an hour and a half. Um, but the studio is much better, and it's just really lovely. But she is just like, okay, I leave, and she's like, can we put something on the calendar for next month so you can come back? She's just committed to enabling, um, to giving me a platform to speak for the animals. And so watch the segment. You know, I can, I can speak for the animals without apology and and it's a beautiful thing. So, you know, so people heard today, you know, the, the hundreds of thousands of people who see Good Day Sacramento heard me say that 45 million turkeys are killed every year for Thanksgiving alone. And, and, and isn't this a better way to reflect our values of compassion? And isn't it a better way to reflect the meaning of Thanksgiving um, to have a beautiful, uh, a beautiful meal and a beautiful dish that reflects life? Um, giving foods rather than life taking foods. So how, how awesome is that? So her name, if someone could type it, actually I can, <laughs> Bethany Crouch. I don't want to, I don't want her name to come up. Okay. It doesn't because I don't want her to know that I'm telling you to do this. Um, but oh, I can't type it because all these other names are coming up. Bethany Crouch, C-R-O-U-C-H on Twitter. She's on Twitter. She's very active on Twitter. And I would just send her an email that just says, thank you so much for giving a voice to compassion or a voice to animals or a voice to Colleen or a voice, you know, uh, for veganism because she's so committed to, uh, to giving me that space. Um, let me see if I can get it. So it's Bethany B A T there it is B E T H A N Y, um, crouch. And her, her full Twitter handle is Bethany Crouch TV. So B-E-T-H-A-N-Y-C-R-O-U-C-H TV is her Twitter handle. And uh, she's, she's really fabulous. And I think she'd be really touched. I wrote to her today and thanked her for, being, for letting me, you know, for giving me a, a platform. And she said, I just adore you, Colleen, and I hope to have you visit us monthly on Mondays. Um, she said, she said, let's find a Monday for you to come in. So that's what she's, uh, doing. And so let's connect with the people. Here's Bethany. When I started going on the show, Bethany wasn't vegan. A lot of the, a lot of the influencers out there who will help us be voices for animals, even your representatives, they may not be vegan, but they have the power to give us a platform and to give us a voice to speak for animals and to give us a platform to be able to change laws and, and paradigms for animals. So use your voice, use your voice. Don't underestimate the power of that voice. Yes, we're going to have, you know, losses. We're not going to win every battle, but we have so many victories and we have to just keep looking at those victories and we have to just keep getting hope from that. So let me just take a couple more comments here. I see a couple more coming in before I go. 
And thank you everybody for all of your amazingness because I'm just so moved and touched by you and your support and your openness and your awesomeness. So, um, so I think you got Bethany's name. Um, Mary says, I definitely agree. We need to make our voices and views heard by elected and appointed representatives, government, ag governmental agencies, as well as newspaper editors. Silence and resignation is not an option or luxury. We can afford Mary. You preach it. Love it. Yeah, I like that list idea too. I'm going to, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do it myself. So let me see if there's anything else I can, I can, um, see here. And again, if anybody has an iPhone that's just lying around, <laughs> an iPhone 5, uh, let me know. Just, you can write to me at support at joyfulvegan.com. Some people do have just like phones sitting in their drawers, uh, cause I cracked my phone. My phone's cracked completely. And, uh, damn it. It's so annoying. Uh, this should be a great thing, right? What Jeff, 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 what? Sherry, hi Sherry, says we, oh, there's some, yeah, there's some glass. Uh, we had quite a few people sign up for faith. Ow, oh, I really caught myself. <laughs> I really did, I caught myself. That's wonderful, Sherry, that's really great. I wonder if it was from the uh, show. Um, oh my gosh, I really did cut myself. Okay, I'm going to go get a Band-Aid. I'm not kidding, I don't want to show you my blood. So I'm going to go and thank you, everybody. Amanda, you do not. Do not. If you have one, can I have it? Because now I cut my thumb. Do you really? Is it a five? That would be amazing. Oh, my gosh, Yanni, you're very sweet. I just actually wrote to my mother's boyfriend today to find out how things are going. Um, last time I checked, she's doing well. We found a wonderful adult day center for her to spend, um, days at. She can spend as much time there as she wants during the week. And, um, so far she's really, she's really happy and really enjoying it. Paul said when he went to pick her up last week, she didn't want to go. <laughs> so that makes me really happy. I know. Thanks everybody. Um, I'm good. I'm fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> really? My blood. Okay. Thanks everybody. Amanda. Amanda. Okay. Let's get on that. Let's get on that right now. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for the animals. This is Colleen Patrick-Cadreau. Thank you for being their voice and for listening.